we start with the puzzle. We're taught when we're young that when you jump from a height, you have to bend your knees as you land. What is the physical explanation for this? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this Nothing Nerdy lesson on force time graphs. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. Force time graphs are very helpful tools to understand motion. You must know that they can tell us how much momentum has changed. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. Here is a reminder. The change in momentum can be calculated by multiplying the force applied for a period of time delta t. If the force changes, we would need to do a number of calculations, but we can also draw a force time graph. In a previous lesson, we learned that graphs are useful for calculating the work done by a variable force. In that case, we were looking at force distance graphs, which help us to calculate work done. In this lesson, you will see that a force time graph is a good method for finding the change in momentum caused by a force as it varies with time. In this situation, the ball and the pin are in contact for a short period of time, 35 milliseconds. A contact time is unavoidable because otherwise the change in momentum would happen in no time and that would need an infinite force, which is impossible. The time period may be short, measured in milliseconds, but it cannot be zero. The pin is 1.4 kilograms and shoots forward with a velocity of 7.5 meters per second. The time of contact between the ball and the pin was 35 milliseconds and so the change in momentum or impulse is 10.5 newton seconds. Now let's draw a graph of the variation of the force and time. We don't know what the exact shape will be, but the force will probably increase to a maximum and then decrease again, all within 35 milliseconds. We know that the area under the force time graph is the impulse, but it would be difficult exactly to work out the area of this curve. But it looks like a triangle, so let's use that as an approximation. This triangle will have approximately the same area as the curve and the area of the triangle is much easier to calculate. Now we add the measurements we know. The time that the interaction lasted is 35 milliseconds. We're going to use the area of the triangle to calculate the maximum value of the force the ball exerts on the pin. We know that the area is the impulse, which is the change in momentum of the pin. And this is mass times change in velocity, which is 10.5 kilogram meters per second and the area is half the time of contact times the maximum force, the base times the height of the triangle. And we can rearrange the formula to find the force. The result is that the force at its maximum value in the middle of the interaction is 600 newtons. Don't forget that this is not exact because we only guessed that this triangle would be a good approximation. The area under the force time graph is the impulse, and that's half times 100 times 4 on this graph, which gives us 200. We equate that to mass times the change in velocity, because we know that that's what we want to know. And then when we rearrange it, we find that the answer is 8 meters per second. Here is the answer to the puzzle we asked at the start of the lesson. When you hit the ground, your momentum changes. By bending your knees, this change happens over a longer time. If we think about the force time graph, then the triangle must have the same area, but its base is wider, which means that the height is less. Your knees will feel a lesser force. <laughs>